To enjoy this and other great episodes on Patreon, check out the link in the description and subscribe via the Black Kluge tier for full access to over 100 exclusive episodes. For those of you who would like some QF swag on TeePublic t-shirts, magnets, mugs, what have you, also click on the link in the description. Do you believe I really care? I don't think you care at all. I care no. a lot. <laughs> I don't. I mean, seriously. You, do you, I don't know myself what I want to do. But I mean, do you think, when you say you'll give us notice, do you think, like, a week is good? I tell like, I'll months. give you my notice now. Just If you find a job, fine. And then uh, if, if I stay here, then I'll get it. The last person you told that to went to the Tonight Show. Uh. <laughs> do your children get upset by that? I have a 14-year-old son. What do you think he thinks about right now? He's but, but he's probably upsetting that his mother's ass is in the bedroom and that if the kids, if the kids no, came over friends... No, I think you're just being absolutely Jewish. Why is that Jewish? That you think of protective. No, I've had this discussion with you people like who are not Jewish. You sound like a nagging mother. Wait a second. Yeah, but this is Eleanor, not... should you have that picture in your room? Your 14-year-old yes, son Yes, I'm at asking that. you, is that damaging to a child to see his My mother... children are very well balanced. I don't see them there. I once saw my mother come out of the shower. It traumatized me. Yeah, I can imagine. If she, she looks had... like you. She had <laughs> some... Oh. Oh, sorry. I had that just... That just slipped out. I'm Jewish, so looks like you. Well, I can't get... Now I see why these guys leave. I know, I understand. I'm exhausted from it all. I understand the point you're making. I'm exhausted from last night. I'm exhausted from this morning. I'm exhausted in general. You didn't really go out last night. I did. It was a lot. It was just... It, you know, I, I got a wife. She's trying to... out for 45 minutes. I was out for 45 minutes, and she's like shell-shocked from me. I drained the life out of everyone. Oh, my God. It's enough. What is the big deal? You are so upset. I don't want to be part of any Hollywood establishment. I don't want to meet Hollywood people. I don't want to have anything to do with them. I had a My wife wants to go to these parties and stuff. I don't, I'm not interested. Because I'm, I, I'm, I, I drive into the Manhattan every day and I listen to it, okay? And if you cut out the bitching, it probably would be about an hour broken. <laughs> You're right. Do you want to know something? Okay. Which, you know, I wish you wouldn't write a book, honestly. Oh, stop. Uh, I really do. <laughs> I mean, I'm not really, I mean, it doesn't do me much good. It doesn't do you much She's talking about donating most of the profits, some of the profits to charity. Well, what the fuck would you do that for? Uh, yeah. Welcome, ladies and gents, to QF, a podcast about Howard Stern. I'm your host, Phil Moore, a.k.a. Jim Fix, and with me is Sam, and we're doing part two of the Pelican in the Iron Mask. How are you doing today, Sam? I'll take a maquette from anyone. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And we're going to keep going, guys, right into it. Ralph's got the same Iron oh, Man. No. Oh, no, because I've seen Ralph's. If it's the same. Yeah, it's plastic. It's yeah, like, but, but, it's... but I thought it was like what they use on a movie set. Like, you, you can't get this. When Ralph got his, even he was disappointed. Like, How did oh. he get it? I think I think um, somebody from Paramount that we knew sent it to him. Oh, but yeah. it wasn't like he was all excited, like you look, I'm going to get a prop. And then when he got it, he was like, Oh, what oh, is this? Oh shit! He he wrote me, join the club. Everyone's got <laughs> one. Then you both put him on bookshelves. Oh, that's <laughs> wrong. I'm, I'm getting rid of mine. I didn't want that, some shit that Ralph has. Oh my! Why god. Why does Favreau do this to me? Uh, Am I? <laughs> this is so great. He's so not special. He feels so. In NPD, this is a real knock because that gesture is the prime aim is to make him feel superior. And now he is down a peg. And that is such a blow for him. Yeah. Well, this is why I don't understand all those fucking Psychology Today fans. That the, they're all uh, psych majors, or they're they got MAs or PhDs, and they write about him on that website. And they had to have heard this. They had to have heard this if they were super fans, because this went on days. I I can't believe he is sound so wounded from this. And yes. think about how narcissistic this sounds. <laughs> Just this and the Petcock, the Petcock saga, which they dra dragged out for a fucking week. Those yeah. two like little events, which is not even really that big of a deal, but he made them into such a big deal. Those would be two cornerstones of any psychological evaluation where you'd go, this guy's fucked up emotionally, whatever. Like this isn't just you couldn't write it off as just shtick. Well, you just see that. He gets emotionally wounded by the slightest things when it. Even when he was discussing Gary, what's his name, uh, the comedian, or uh, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, Gary, uh, Gary Shandling, Gary first, Shandling, first episode, well, yeah. He was wounded by his money or his success. He gets wounded by anybody who is happy, 
sound superior, hanging out with people that he wants to hang out with, even though he doesn't really want to do that. It still wounds him. Mm -hmm. It's so strange. But this is like to top it all off. So you just see this like checklist of narcissistic wounds happening, like one slice after another. And now he hears that Ralph is the helmet. He's just like, blah. (laughs) And she cheers you. Why did Favreau do this to me? Yes. Right. Not again, not again, not Howard's fault for being broken. It's Favreau's fault because he didn't send the right gift. And, you know, Favreau, Favreau's not a stupid person. You don't think he listened to this whole thing at the end after he finished sending it and said to himself and like just consulted psycho psychological disorders. He had to have. I, I'm, I hope he did. And I hope he found what he is and decided never to send him anything or talk to him again. But yeah, that sentence that you just said is the total encapsulation of okay. what MPD. this whole saga is. We're going to make QF MPD bumper stickers. Just Person. stop it. Just stop it. What I don't know doing? what his problem is, but he's certainly getting a lot of attention from it. Yeah, well, I'm done. Even someone said, don't let John, Fa-. in the email, someone said, don't let John Favreau direct footless because he didn't stand up to Mel Gibson when you asked him about That's it. That's true. And look, yeah. he keeps sending you junk. junk. And I wrote him this glowing thank you note, like, oh, my God. And I think he even felt guilty because he's like, no, 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 you got to understand this is not from the movie. Right. That's yeah. I, even when you read the first letter, I was like, I'm not sure that's from the movie. And you want to be? You, can I be honest about it? Like when, I, when I had this helmet, I was like, wow, this is just a cheap piece of shit. But that makes that makes. Uh, that makes sense that this is a cheap piece of shit because it's just supposed to it's not. Just- that is not what he said. He said, wow, look at this. It lights up. Ooh, it's so cool. Right. <laughs> like within the same argument, he said, look, I thought this was great. Then I changed. Then I found out it was just very common and anybody could have gotten it, which it wasn't. He's still wrong. That's the whole point. He's going on all about this shit. And John Favreau's going, you cocksucker. This is from the goddamn people that make this shit. This isn't, sure, a, this isn't a Fisher Price job. Like, don't you think Ralph's is probably, you know, made in China and his is made in America and some sort of, you know, studio that they do these elaborate costumes in? I'm, I'm positive it's not the same, but it, may, right. it might look the same, you know, kind of when you get a fucking Fendi bag and for off the corner of some New York bodega, but it's not the same as the real Fendi, but it looks good enough. Well, <laughs> it's like, you know, Favreau went to Amazon Prime and had something sent to him via, you know, in a little buy in a courier. Come on. I How mean, could you do this to me? <laughs> exactly. Jesus. Real. Right. They yeah. use these as props in yeah. the movie. But read to me what it is again. <laughs> you mean the same thing that Ralph has? <laughs> Ralph sent me a picture of his showing the club. I thought he would be jealous. I thought he just meant, oh, you're collecting things now. Uh, I'm getting rid of mine. If anybody wants it, I'll, I'll give it Jason, to Jason, do you want another <laughs> Iron Man prop? Ralph, how did you get that? Actually, mine's at, is yours made of metal? No. Mine is. Mine weighs about <laughs> 20 pounds. It's made of metal. Where did you get that? <laughs> This is Ralph making it worse because he thinks it has to be made of metal to be real, which is not the case. Usually they're like fiberglass or something, but there has to be something you can actually like almost, um, what do you call it? Uh, car, not carve, um, uh, uh, with a ch- chisel away. Like it, it, as those artisans do, the, the, they really want fine work. You're not necessarily going to get the same level of craftsmanship in with metal as you are with, let's say, clay or other materials. But if you are for I got two things to say, if you're judging it on weight, this isn't like a fucking bag of yay. You know, (laughs) it's like, (laughs) what do you fucking have a scale on when you get things? How much does this thing weigh? Ralph's got an an eight ball. (laughs) (laughs) It's so fucking crazy. But then with the metal versus whatever his is, you have to think, does an actor want to wear a 20 pound metal helmet if right. he's doing scenes? No, he would be wearing something light, adaptable, flexible, something that he could take on and off easily that he could read his lines in. You know, yes. you want it to be realistic as to what they're going to be wearing on the set. He's not going to be walking around in some goddamn metal helmet. Right. <laughs> Iron. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got it from a uh, a company who makes like replicas and things like that. Listen, oh. yours is definitely better. 
Why? Because it's yours is actually like I could point it out to you why it's better because it's 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 made from the molds of the company who made the props made your thing. What is this, Doug? That's what. Doug just handed it. It looks like you can buy almost exactly what you have—a replica helmet on yeah. Amazon for four hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, that's what I have. It was like uh, it's like a five hundred dollar thing. I got it for like a hundred bucks. Uh, so do you think you know, his is a replica? And Yours is a double. All right, <laughs> all right, Ralph. You're you're a maven on all this stuff. Why is my Iron Man head better than yours? Because it's pulled from the mold of the the, guy, the Stan Winston Studios or whatever they're calling themselves now. Right. Well, I don't think it's Stan Winston. Yeah, yeah, they have a new name, but go ahead. They, they yeah. have a new name, but they designed the Iron Man costume. It's a piece of, of, of that. It's the exact thing that you see in the movie. And right. It's, it's kind of like av after every Oscar or Matt Gala, there's these knockoff sites like Sheen that mm -hmm. will replicate the look, but it's not the same material. It's not the same. Um, it's not you're the same measurements. You're like talking dresses. about like gowns and stuff, right? So every time there's like an award show or something, all these knockoff sites will make something that looks almost identical, but the material is cheap. The feathers are not real bird feathers. The leather is not real leather. The belt buckle is not real gold. Do you understand right. what I'm saying? Sure. Sure. So Howard has the real thing. Ralph has the sheen dot right. com thing. Right. He has, <laughs> he has he has Adidas sneakers. <laughs> 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 you know, I collect all that shit. So anytime I could see like a knockoff Nike or knockoff, like I've seen Fuma many times uh, over the years. I've seen all kinds of, there in China, someone sent me <laughs> a picture of OFC, Obama fried chicken. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> anyway, I will tell you, um, the uh, the the thing is when you got like so Ralph's like here he is uh, we have like twenty five minute clip but eight minutes in Howard should be or ten minutes into this particular clip he's not done yet guys How, Ralph has just told him exactly what he needs to hear his thing is better and he but he doesn't believe Ralph and he doesn't want to believe him because he thinks Ralph is an idiot he thinks how could Ralph know meanwhile Ralph is a dork he would know this stuff he would know this stuff and. Howard is more, what do you want? You want your object to have more matter, more density, more volume. <laughs> he want he wanted it to be attached to like Tony, like a uh, fucking Robert Downey Jr. Severed head. That's basically yeah. it. <laughs> he wanted it to be a cartel. Yeah. <laughs> he had it in a fucking helmet. <laughs> the Pablo Escobar studio put this one together. <laughs> Here you I go. I've been the one that on Robert Downey's head, but who gives a fuck? It's the exact same thing. And I don't think this thing could fit over a person's head. No, mine can't. But fit how collectible does that mine, make? Mine can, by the way. Mine can't. I could wear it. I wear it around the house. Mine's too small. But how collectible does that make that? You know, it's like I saw somebody the other day. They had some baseball memorabilia. It was like the shoe of a baseball player. I don't and know. And it was like this guy. But yet, it what he never wore the shoe. All and they I just send them out and they charge like 200 bucks a pop. The, the same company that made the helmet also made that toy that they that he sent. Right. Me. Yeah. Well, what goes on? It's now, a more it's more merchandise. Yeah. But, yeah, but what goes on now the, the these 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 prop guys who make all this stuff realize, you know, like, hey, fuck, you know, other people are selling our stuff, we should sell it ourselves. We That's nothing. Uh, so that Fabro said he's sending me a Xerox copy of Babe Ruth's autograph, <laughs> the actual <laughs> autograph. <laughs> I mean, uh, what is this? It's the actual autograph. Oh, hey, listen, but it's a Xerox. <laughs> I'll trade you. I'll trade you mine for yours. Mine, mine's metal. You might like mine better. Well, mine. You also have to remember, guys. This is the second present. Yeah. He could have got nothing. Mm hmm. <laughs> I, I, I'm. I, I'm just so dumbfounded at how he thinks this is coming off. Well, I mean, yes, what? I and nobody stops him. No, and, and, and actually Robin's the worst because she doesn't just literally tell him, you shut the fuck up. He just sent you something. Like, and this is something you say off the air. Say, you're being a real cunt. This guy's doing you a huge solid. He's a director. He's, a, he's Now he's a big director behind a huge blockbuster, and you're pissing all over him. If you had any self, sense of self-preservation, you don't think other people in the industry aren't listening to this or a few people or agents or whatever and hearing – I don't want my my guest fucking shit on my 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 uh, my person my the person I represent shit on like this. Not only that, but then think about the company that made it too. Yep. Oh, mine looks like shit. 
Right. Oh, good. And, so now you're pissing on an entire cottage industry who makes costumes. Right. And then collectors, collectors are tuning out going, you fucking dick. Do you know how many, you know how many people would be like given their left nut for this kind of stuff? Not that I would, but I mean, there's loads of people that would do that, that, that collect these things like crazy. I mean, they have, it's not like hoarders, but there's those episodes. You ever see those, those architectural episodes where they focus on people who have turned their, downstairs into an arcade or they've made a movie room or something like that. They have a theme going on and all of a sudden this one's a Marvel theme. They get loads of press. We have people every year, like local news studios, they go into their man cave or their basement of their house and it is Bill's heaven. I mean, it is Bill's memorabilia, Bill's jerseys, Bill's cups, 1985, 1997. Yeah. I mean, just everywhere, Bill stuff. And the, from the floors to the tables to the bar to everything. everything. And it's amazing. Yeah. And I appreciate people who do that. I'm not one of those people. But again, this is something that those people would kill for <laughs> if they were. They would be the people who are standing in line at Comic-Con, you know? It's like someone sending me, uh, like, if, let's say I decided to make my living room into, you know, the Tonight Show set, circa 1978, and someone's oh, you, so and, you, you. and you sent me a mug that broke. These fuckers, oh, <laughs> it would have gone on the me? desk. Yeah, you want to talk about sad moments? It's coming again. By the way, if they send it wrong again, Fillmore, I will flip the fuck out. I uh, sent Fillmore a Johnny Carson mug because you know it's just a nice smile in your morning when you're having your coffee to see Johnny's face, I would think. So I sent him the mug and Fillmore took, I go, oh, yay. I I was following the tracking and it got there and I was so excited. I go, and Fillmore, (laughs) I looked at my messenger and it's a picture of a cracked mug right in half. I was like, God damn it. So then I went on the phone with Amazon. And of course, that is such a big pain in my ass yes it is and then they have to double check triple check okay yeah. okay and i go just send another mug <laughs> yeah well i mean you know it costs them nothing to make it for fuck's sake and the other thing is so and, and it was funny because they shipped it's, it's funny the way companies make this error in 2023 they they double it's double cardboard as as packing on one on, on one side of it but then single cardboard on the other side so all it needs is one wrong flip and boom it's cracked because that stuff those things break like no one's business that's unbelievable how they packed it i go one wrong little tink or that's it hit that's it there's going to be either a crack or it's going to break in half that's just how yes. that works yeah i mean any i'm not a physicist or physics i don't know what do you call it <laughs> but i even know this because I, the, when you move you know how to pack things because you right. know the things that are going to fucking shatter or break if you hit it the wrong way and the top and the butt there's no bubble wrap nothing and for glass you need bubble you need those air uh, things you have to have bubble wrap or some type of bubble uh you know inflated thing all most of the companies are all doing that now that automated stuff and it works it works a charm you remember how I, it used to be with that that styrofoam packing that whenever everywhere as soon as you open it up yeah i was like praying they didn't put it in that paper like that ripped up shredded tissue paper stuff and i was like oh because that might break and then when you sent me the picture and i saw that's what it was packed i go what are these people idiots (laughs) they they were probably using it as a football actually sounds like it's more valuable but yeah but um, not that much metal but it's still not from the movie it's not yeah, rewind. A prop. Yet. All right, okay. The nameplate was featured on camera. So that's so that's good. That's the Senator Stern. Yeah, but how thing. many nameplates did they make? I don't know. Well, more than one. <laughs> but as long as it was on camera, it's valuable. Right. I the helmet about was not worn plate. in this film. Yeah. But is in fact right. one of the few identical camera doubles made from the same molds and to the same specifications by the effects house identical camera double this is a, one of the comments by the way i forgot about this there was a marvel writer back in the day named roger stern and it was most likely him that the movie was referencing as a nod because a lot of these guys pass away and that marvel likes to take their you know they like to name characters after oh. some of the some of the writers and you know uh, illustrators back in the day especially after they pass away as a tribute that's nice. <laughs> that'd, like, be, you know, that'd be even more fun if we found out that it wasn't named after Howard and he found out. I'd be thrilled. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would be very happy about that. But basically these directions or this explanation about what they're saying, not directions, but yeah. blurb about what they're saying about the helmet 
is if they if it's as if he received a dress that was a duplicate and sewn by John Galliano or Monique Lulier. She made the double. It's yep. the same. She had her seamstresses make it the same in house. Yeah. Versace, yeah. something. Mm-hmm. This is not Amazon shit. Yeah, it's like when we were discussing. Um, I th- I can't remember if it was us discussing. Uh, no, it wasn't. But either way, when he would get like John Varvatos to ha- make him stuff uh, for AGT, like you know Ooh. that they're not they're not selling Pelican seven f- seven foot Pelican gear on the off the rack. They have to make it specially for him, specially tailored because he's just a freak of nature. Um, but you know that it's going to a, it's from a John Varvatos whatever, yeah. like if a tailor, um, a, a, like a, a sponsored tailor where it's just the same as what you would find at a normal John Varvatos store back in the day, except more specified because it needed to be, it would, it, it, you're going to bitch because it wasn't from the New York area. Like it wasn't from the New York location or something like that. Come on. Or like so, John Varvatos wasn't, you know, sitting every night sewing and sewing it with, with his singer. Sewing yeah. <laughs> the other part too is if he does, if he doesn't like it or find it special, if he wasn't such a fucking narcissist and lunatic, yeah. Yeah. he could sell it. If you got something like that and you were disappointed or you were upset about it, you could just say, you know what? If this is such a hot collectible, and I know all those nerds at Comic Con who would kill for something like this with mm-hmm. all these specifications and all this explanation, I could make triple, and yep. it was free for me. So what a dunce! Resell it and shut the fuck up. <laughs> I would love to see him walk into Pawn Stars. <laughs> exactly. <Put it> on. <laughs> Listen, I got to take all the risk here. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's will take me a year to move this piece. <laughs> that whole family, the grandpa walks out. <laughs> yeah. What you got there? Oh, <laughs> we got some uh, coins from the time of Jerusalem and an Iron Man mask. <laughs> <laughs> To me, like, oh, look at <laughs> What's that? I, I have this vintage poster from K Rock. <laughs> it was in my fart. mother's house. <laughs> we got a fart man suit. <laughs> We've been trying to get rid of it on eBay for $40,000 for 10 years. We got no takers. <laughs> what, do you think the, what, do you, what do you think the market is for it? <laughs> <laughs> and I have barely worn boots that go with it. <laughs> yeah, basically. Used if one of the other ones broke. Right. Yeah. It, it is, it, it, you, no, here's what it is. They I had a mold left you. over and they made some new ones to give to idiots like me. It's an identical no, I, I could show you. Demo. I could show you a picture of the effect shot and they have these Iron Man helmets. You know what up. I feel like? You ever see these guys who walk around with Super Bowl rings, but they're like bathroom attendants. Right. They just get... happen to be in the building. Yeah, right. I didn't get. No. The... <laughs> it is a... That's not how it works. You could you you could get replica like like Super Bowl rings made. I'm certain like of that. But the actual ones they have they 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 must have some kind of uh, inscription or not inscription, but something a demarcation to indicate this is from a set of blah, blah, blah made for this winning team. So it goes to the owner, goes to the, you know, like the assistant, the coaches, the defensive coaches, all that stuff, like whoever wins that, that year. I bet that they have a specific jeweler who yes. does these rings, Yeah, right? Custom. I'm sure that he's a well-known, prominent jeweler who does the rings. I'm sure they use a certain cut of diamond. Yes, and, sure and gold, use- silver, whatever what combo of metals. Correct. So it's not going to be like your K jeweler Super Bowl ring. You know no. what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's not on have... QVC. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not going to be fucking Beth hocking crap on yeah. QVC. Yeah. I, I also think, too, that I've never, I don't know about you, but bathroom attendants, I have yet to see one with a Super Bowl ring. <laughs> I mean, where, where I go, there are no attendants. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. <laughs> uh, I mean, they barely exist anymore. They were a yeah. lot more prominent when I was younger with the mids and the everything that they yeah. had perfumes that all were so cheap that you'd rather just like wash in the toilet than spray that crap on you. I, Again, you I don't know what last, that was. The last time I saw one was watching Ferris Bueller. <laughs> <laughs> Prop, so not long. a commercial piece, whatever that means. The magnetic, the magnetic neck piece allows it to be worn by the stunt performer. We added the lights. What from- magnetic neck piece? 
I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> might, he, yeah, I didn't see it next. I week. think he felt bad. I, he, I was carrying on so much, and he realizes I've been taken. He must feel great now. Yeah. <laughs> and and in the movie, do the eyes light up in the masks? Yeah, well, they I do. Think when, that, when, I think that kind of like ruins the uh, you know, the you collectability know. of it when they add aftermarket shit. No, you, you you could probably take that out. But I mean, they altered it already. Oh, they didn't alter it. They made the eyes light up. They, 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 that, that means that's, that's what altered. Saying, that's what the word again. altered means. No, I like the eyes lighting up. What? Here's what I got out of it. When I, I think he knew Howard would want it to be extra special, so he added those lights. And sure. Howard's like a child, you know, who, <laughs> oh, what does this do, Mommy? Oh, this one, if you press the button, look. Buzz Lightyear's helmet flies up and his wings light up. And he says, Buzz Lightyear to the rescue. Yeah. So that he knows Howard is such a child that he would appreciate that quote unquote you, upgrade of the toy. You'd think, you'd think, but there's no, there's no way. And he, and he probably did. Ha you're right. He probably went and said, look, guys, can you make this? Can you, you know spiff this up a little bit before so it's not just a a, a piece of material in me, me, never mind that that alone is supposed to be something of value something of worth but because it's going to howard yeah it's got to have the bells and whistles and uh, like getting a car changing the rims and the guy's pissed off because he doesn't have the original rims which are pretty nondescript yeah it's putting a bumper sticker on a bentley but howard yeah. would like it if it said senator stern that's how fucking stupid he is. And Fred is correct, but Howard, John was smart. He knew that Howard likes the bells and whistles because it makes him feel special. Like, see what I did for you? Yeah. I put Christmas lights in it. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, Favreau emailed me and it explained to me exactly what it was, too. And I thought to myself, after the first time, either he doesn't have access to the really good stuff right. or he's not giving it up. Right. Because after the first time, I thought he would have just sent you the suit. Right. Yeah. Like <laughs> Bowie. Now you really are showing your intelligence. Who in we talked about this in the first episode. I don't want to keep going over it, but there's no way they're said, selling those fucking suits. You'll see them at Sotheby's inside of 25 years for sale eventually for loads yeah. of money. Yes. He unless there's some scandal, unless there's some scandal where, you know, um, like a, a Danny Masterson scandal with <laughs> Robert Downey mm. Jr. between now and then or a Cosby scandal that destroys Marvel. Right. And f also, Bowie is trying to sound like in the know. Yes. But it's clear that he doesn't know. It, and this makes it so obvious he doesn't have connections. All this time, I'm what's supposed to be the biggest radio show in the world and listen to him. Yeah. <laughs> he has no idea but what the I'm fuck he's talking about. None. Man, so, so either he doesn't have access to that stuff, maybe yeah. maybe the movie company holds on to the good it's stuff. Fine. Listen, look, here's my point. They're selling I don't, suits now. I don't, too, by the way. I don't want <laughs> anything. I really don't. <laughs> I, 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 but it just seems to me, if you're going to send me something, if I'm that important to you. Dude, that thing no! is so cool. Come on. It's if you're going to send me something. I don't, I don't really want anything, but I'm going to drill this point home till then, your fucking eyes are bloodshot and you got razor blades in the bathtub. I mean, what the fuck? I mean, uh, the, you fuck somebody's wife and you say, listen, I don't want to really bother. I don't want to really upset you, but <laughs> <laughs> you just hear the slapping sounds. <laughs> I mean, like, like, who does he think is going to be fooled by, by this obvious gaslighting? You did want something and that's why you're bitching about it. You claim like you bitched about not getting something and then you got something and now you're saying I didn't want anything, but you did say you wanted something. The first argument sounded so childish and spoiled yeah he's using the same fucking argument for the mm -hmm. next toy for the next mm -hmm. helmet or thing that he's given yep. i left i i wrote a really nice thank you know i my fucking kid writes a nice thank you know it's not a big deal yeah it's it come on it, it does it, look it, good in my office thing. though it, it looked cool That's yeah but what do i tell people this is a, this is the same thing ralph has no, i get it you know but it's different if ralph had it it'd be one thing but you're howard stern so you go, no, John but, Favreau gave this to me. And they go, oh, was it used in the movie? And you go, no. No, yeah. But that should be that should be plenty right there. John Favreau gave this to me. Who's That's, coming you, over? You're, well, yeah, first there's that. First of all, the name should be enough. John Favreau's a big enough name where if he gave you a fucking handkerchief, you should say, that's the thing. If And if you're really that kind of a star fucker anyway, which you are, obviously, then that should be more than enough. But no, 
John Favreau didn't give me a good enough gift. <laughs> He really, he wants John Favreau at his house at all times when he has parties, popping out of the closet, presenting the helmet. <laughs> right. He doesn't want the John Lennon signed album. He wants the lyric sheets written by John Lennon. Oh, for Christ's sake. He wants I... the master tapes. Fuck you. It's, it's yeah. like my, my dick goes soft. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, say it's from Iron Man. But I don't want to display something that's from Iron It's not even from Iron Man. I don't want to have an Iron Man head in my head of, uh, in my house. It was uh, something they kept on the truck. Right. <laughs> What's the difference? Well, you're, how bad do you want to just demolish and derby this helmet during this conversation? I want to take one of those big sledgehammers, you know, in like high school bonfires when they just get a shit car so people can... Hold that they pay five bucks to grab a hammer and smash it, and that's fun. Yep. That is what I want to do to this helmet right now for how annoying he is. Well, this is this is kind of part of the, the reason why I wanted to um torture to, me to, well, to do this saga because it's not entertaining. That's number one. It's not it's just not entertaining to hear him rant about stuff endlessly. It's certainly it's doubly less entertaining that it's it's a gift that he's shitting all over. Not that I have any great love for John Favreau and trying to like white knight him or something. It's just along the lines of where's this going? It's not entertaining. Just cue in like like uh, exchange this for an FCC rant or, you know, we just got to serious and we're uncensored rant or a uh, clear channel rant or whatever the lawsuit rant. And everybody tunes out. Everybody's looking for something else to listen to. But it, it's even worse because it makes it shows them how shallow he is. And how stupid he is that he can't even properly properly formulate an argument why this is bothering him. Well, he's a low IQ narcissist. Yeah. So he, he's wounded and he can't just handle the wound, mm -hmm. wound and hide it and put mm -hmm. on the false face. He is completely wounded and he has to lash out like a little tyrant child king baby. And but it's coming across so poorly. But don't see the thing is you and I like we 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 handle you know in a work situation you handle your, yourself differently and everybody handles themselves differently than they would in in their private life obviously you're not going to use f bombs at work da 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 but we do are you think, do you, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know <laughs> unless you, unless you work at the fucking, unless you work at the fucking academy um, the I think that with him i'm never actually sure sometimes that he realizes he's on the show when he's doing some of these rants i think he gets almost out of body in his own mind and thinks i'm in my room i'm not actually speaking to you know thousands of listeners i agree with you because you could tell the difference when he's cognizant of an audience when mm -hmm. he's on talk shows it's very controlled it's very yes. different i mean out of control control. He yes. has his, you know, I'm gonna dress up like a woman. I'm gonna make I'm gonna bring out lesbians. But it's that seems like chaos in the moment if you're not a trained listener like we are, but it's not. That's control to the nth degree mm -hmm. for him. And, right. And there's like, yeah, the ones that are designed and engineered to be that way. The other and the other rants are like uh, like the Wendy Williams that we just covered, and it's it's going to be coming out sometime in the next while, guys. Um, the the idea that you will have already heard it, but the idea that sometimes he goes in with the protection of this is my studio, I can say what I want. Again, I I just don't know how intentional it is sometimes, as opposed to other times when it's completely manufactured for the air and you know made to be like this. Okay, today we're going to rant about this. It's in the binder, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes when it gets like this, I think it's literally unchecked narcissistic rage and he's got a mic on and he would do this, but it's not, he, he waited till he got to the show to do it. He did, but he was probably doing it on the way to the show and at oh, home. He was he has been doing this since he found out about Ralph yes. having it. I guarantee it in his private yes. home and now here. Here's the other problem. Robin is also a narcissist. Mm -hmm. So you cannot have, if he had somebody like you or I next to him mm -hmm. trying to guide the conversation to a different place or completely discard the conversation, he yep. doesn't have that. He has somebody who also sees this as a wound yeah. Because she likes to be superior as well and likes to have, mm -hmm. I have this over you. I'm better than you because I have this and likes to appear better. So I yeah. just think that this is the worst person you could bounce this conversation off of because she's fueling it. 
Yes, absolutely. And Fred's doing it as well in his own little way. So if it's you don't say difference. anything, people would assume that it's from the movie yeah. because it's you. Well, what I did was I took the note Favreau sent me with it and I displayed that as well. So people at least, but even in the note, it kind of says it's it not, says from, it's the not movie. from the movie. Don't yeah. take that down. I just realized this too. Robin's fueling this because Robin thinks she's the other half of the show, right? Mm -hmm. But it's always the Howard Stern show, even though Robin considers herself half of the show. Favreau did not send Robin anything. Robin is wounded from that disregard, even though she didn't, you know, chirp up about, I want something too. She probably didn't. Uh -huh. But the fact that he gets the gifts, he gets not one gift, he gets two gifts. So why not have a whole segment and then some shitting on John Favreau? Cause I didn't get anything and I'm half this show too. There's always a little of that. And it's, you, you know, you get, you get more, um, obvious examples when we did the 34 plus 60 minutes um you know the the breakdown yeah. where she was jealous of his his and, and let, let's be and we we knew it then not jealous pissed pissed that she was cut out of that fucking expo that you know that profile um but then later on certain other things where she's not included sometimes she likes being called a sidekick other times no i'm not his sidekick i'm his partner i'm his you're not you're not his partner. You're his tool. You're just another tool in the tool belt for him to get away with shit. Right. That's why I think she's enjoying this, too, because it's a disregard of her as an equal. Yes. And she's always made since the beginning of time. And we've seen like in the Sally Jesse Raphael thing mm -hmm. to stick up for him. And she does go to bat for him because she thinks she's his equal. Yes. And she also thinks that come what may, he's going to do the right thing at the end of the day. I do owe him a little bit of this and I owe him for this, but I, I don't know that they, she owes him anything. I think they owe each other. I, I oh. do think it's mutual. It's so it should be like a 50, 50 thing, but he just won't see it that way. It's codependent narcissism. <laughs> really? Like it, it, there, I don't, I don't know of any other relationship in the business in, in, in any show business or in real life like this, quite like this. I'm surprised that they haven't blown up and quit because yeah. of the way they both operate. I just think mm -hmm. their narcissism is different enough to just continue this coexistence. Mm -hmm. But I I think that Robin at points has probably wanted to throw in the towel. But I also think Howard has felt that way as well, especially during the book. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, 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 there, there are certain uh, eras of the show where you can definitely feel the push and pull aspect of yeah. their relationship. And then you, you have to ask yourself, like w w in their mind, are they, what's, what's keeping them from going critical mass? Is it I, the finances? Like, oh, I need to keep this gig. Cause what else, what the fuck else am I going to do? Oh, I need Robin because if I can't have her, I'm not going to be able to do, you know, the Nelly song and I won't be able to release this and I won't be able to do, uh, the Spike Lee sketch on the channel nine show. And you go, well, this is, this is worth it because of this. Like I can, I can, I can put up with this because of what it brings me. I don't have to like it, but I need it. I think it's that, but I also think they become symbiotic and together when they have a common enemy. When mm -hmm. they have a common enemy or, for example, like this, Robin feels maybe feels slighted. He's upset about what the present is. They like to attack people together. They That to them is fun. Yep. Absolutely. Oh. You need, you need All I know is I have the lamest display in my <laughs> office right now, and I'm getting rid of it. You're, you're just playing notes from now, too. You're really going over. Well, I want authentic. I want authentic. That you have to get from the people who I make mean, it. even like authentication. Authentication. Sorry. <laughs> authentication. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Put that one in the if it, make that a drop later on. Guys. How many? How many? Yeah. Oh my Sal. <laughs> I'm all shook up from it. And now I have to, because I told Beth it was from the movie. Now I have to break it to her that it's not. And I, you know, <laughs> it is from the movie. No, it's not. It is. How Ralph, is it not? It, you're not understanding. If <laughs> she she promised me a blowy if I, it was from the movie. <laughs> hey, Beth. Well, yeah. I have some bad news. Bad news. Ah, <laughs> uh, this helmet. This helmet that you love so much. It's it's not it's, as good as we thought. Ralph has a copy from Amazon. 
you know, um, guys, if you're thinking of a movie analogy, it's like in uh, Fast Times at Richmond High when he, he's told yeah. play the beginning of Led Zeppelin, <laughs> Led Zeppelin four on the date, and he starts playing something from Physical Graffiti. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's all he had <laughs> at the beginning of a date. I love it. I bet throw on that Pittsburgh jersey and make a fucking sorry ass post about the helmet. Oh, fucking he uh, is. Oh, Jesus Christ. One said to me, What is that? I can't say it's from the movie. It's a mold. It wasn't he said on it wasn't pan. from the movie. Favreau's saying it's not he, in the movie. He, he, it's a, it's but I bet the sign was, I gotta go. <laughs> it was a replica from the. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. I don't need, I don't want to explain. A camera double. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know. I think. Boy, it really sucked when he sent me back a picture of his. I right. did that. I do. I... The other reason, by the way, this rant is so pathetic beyond the obvious reasons is it makes him sound so desperate for, you know, this, this, this stuff that you really, he has the money to buy authentic That's... swag from whatever fucking production he wants. If he wants the goddamn like blocks from the 10 commandments, he probably has money for it. I know. And that's why it's so weird to me. Well, because like I said, I think he's a low IQ narcissist. So yeah. if you really felt this way, tell it to Ralph in a private conversation and then do your show. Rant about it to Ralph or Robin in private or Beth in private and shut the fuck up about it on the show. Do you know how thirsty and pathetic this makes you sound? And then rant about it in private and resell the goddamn helmet and make yeah. your marbles and buy Beth some fucking purse. Shut up. Gonna- I was going to ask you, this is a perfect question for you and for the, um, for the listeners. What is a piece of Hollywood memorabilia, like movie memorabilia, some, whether it's clothing, whether it's a prop, whatever, that you would love to have for real Ooh. and display it? Any size, it? like a, no limitation, just playing, with, playing for fun. Huh, let me think about this for a second. Mm-hmm. Or let's give you a three things, if you, if you have okay. to, because one is kind of tough. Um, I would love the Grace Kelly dress from Rear Window when she okay. first comes in and she starts turning on the lights with Jimmy Stewart in the wheelchair because I just think that dress with the tool is so fabulous. It's beautiful. I would love that dress. Oh, God, she looks so pretty. Um, I let me think what else. Um, uh, I would love the Adam Sandler jersey that he wore in Happy Gilmore. He wore, I think it's a Pittsburgh jersey or something. It's yellow, black, and white. Okay. When he's le- first learning how to hit the golf balls, I thought that was really funny. And it reminds me of my cousin Peter who passed away because we used to watch that movie, I don't know, endless amount of times in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, and let me think. Third thing third thing we're gonna have to speed this up because i'm (laughs) okay well i'll throw i'll throw a couple in first of all i want the ketchup bottle from the dinner table at tommy's mother's house in goodfellas that de niro does the thing with to put it on his uh uh his potato frittata uh which you know only the irish guy (laughs) he knew enough to put make sure the only the irishman is putting ketchup on his potatoes in that scene and the italian would never do that there's that um from the movie heat I want Al Pacino's television that he kicks out of his car. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Okay. And then from uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, I want the set of brass balls uh, that Baldwin uses at the beginning of that first, even though he's a dickhead now and a, a murderer. Uh, not you. a murderer, a killer. I love that that movie. I love that uh, that that scene. Um. I would want the Escalade that Tony Soprano drove. Okay. Because it's that 2000 and early aughts Escalade, and it's so iconic. And It is. I just love watching that white Escalade like drive across the jersey to the bridge and the whole thing and that scene. Mm. And I love the way he sits in it and steers the wheel. I just, it's something about it. Fair enough. Guys, so that's the question for you guys. You can pick any three things. We'll just say for the sake of argument, put in the comments, what would you like to take? What would you? What piece of movie history would you like to have? Because it could be something very small, very minute, a script, yeah. signed, signed script. I'm curious to hear your answers. 
do that was fun. Oh, was just you so... really wanted to take his the yeah. air out of his sails. Oh, he, he totally, because I sent it to him so he'd be so envious. And then he had the same stupid head sitting on his gun. And I'm like, wait a second. There's like a, a, those books, I don't, what, it's not my bookshelf. What is this? I go, oh, my God. Ralph's goes, join the club. Ralph, well, did you have to find a bookshelf to put it on? <laughs> no, it was actually on the shelf already, but I did wait till later in the day because it was too bright in here. I was like, I'll, I'll take a picture of it later when the light's oh. better. It looks cooler. All right. Thank you. Did you, you notice goodbye. my fan, too, the special fan I had? I think your special stand was nice because the eyes were all lit up. I haven't figured out how to light my eyes up yet. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Can you imagine this man putting together computer. a Christmas tree? <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't imagine him scraping the windows of a car that are iced up. <laughs> Which end do I use? Oh, my God. <laughs> we'll work on that when I come over. Right. Bye bye. Bye that. Oh, I can't even tell you how devastated I was. <laughs> he had the same stupid Iron Man head, and I'm running around. Look at my. I even to Tim. I go, Tim, do you see what I have on display? Uh, that's the Iron Man head from. Uh, he's like from the movie. I go, oh yeah. So he couldn't wait to tell every single person he knew. I got famous shit. That's the level of it. Not even that I wanted it. Oh. Not even that I really cared one way or the other. Look at my famous shit. So ultimately, that's about as shallow as you get. It really is. I mean, it would be nice to have famous shit. You know, I display the Joan Rivers thing you got me at work. Mm. It makes my day because, you know, work is work. But when I look at that picture, I'm like, I love this picture. It makes me happy. It's in people come in and they're like, oh, hey, what's that? Where did you get that? I like that. But I get more emotional attachment to things like Christmas ornaments mm -hmm. every year when you unwrap your special ornaments. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. worthless to pretty much everybody on the planet except for me and right, my family. They might, right. They mean something to you because you remember when you got them or who got them for you. That's yeah. the year, the, 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 the occasion, et cetera, the, the opening, the first time you saw it, all those things. Yeah, I agree. Uh, oh, the personal yeah. stuff always means more. The, the sign is from the <laughs> Oh, my. No, I... Well, this just gets re more ridiculous every time it, it happens. Now John will have to find some other piece of junk to send you. Mm -hmm. No. A rich guy's house, and he's got a Picasso. He doesn't have a copy right. of a Picasso. Right. No. You know. He's got the real. This... But if you're Howard, you don't, you're too cheap to buy a Picasso when you have the money for it. No, he just displays endless selfies of Beth and life size all over the house, you cheap fuck. Cheap piece of shit. Fuck's sake. This, no, I've got a copy of it. This was the working print of, like, the Mona Lisa. It wasn't the final. Yeah. This is a Mona Lisa light. Right. <laughs> this is a sketch of you know. the Mona Lisa. That would be fucking worth a ton of money, Robin, you dumb shit. They're idiots. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the analogy kings strike again. Like, um, I remember in the first episode, I was telling you about my friend's parents who own some Dolly uh, uh, sketches, which are the, the real thing. And they're probably yeah. worth tens of thousands of dollars now. But um, I was trying to think of what would you what would you want? you know, of that ilk, like musical instruments. He's got those. He's got fucking signed guitars from people. He's got all that sort of, that David Bowie guitar, I, which I'm sure he still has, regardless of what he said he did with it. Um, but uh, there are people that would just, uh, I, it, 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 it kind of pisses me off because I know loads of people who would cry if they had a David Bowie signed guitar. Or I know people who would probably cry for that helmet. Yes. You know, it's just ridiculous. And he just sounds like such an asshole. John Spo Favreau, Spo send him Spo absolutely Spo nothing. Send him. Send him. What is shit. that? What is that? Asbestos in the mail. Just dust. <laughs> and fucking. Send him anthrax. <laughs> yeah, send him anthrax. Hanging in my right. in my. Well, it's funny because I told you I was out in Malibu not too long ago, and this person's house was filled with you know terminator type stuff mm. like you know he actually had like a terminator you know all the the metal yeah. replica oh of the in his okay house. so robin knew that metal pissed him off so now she has to say she doesn't know what it's made out of no oh, she, he had the metal thing but again it's robin the analogy is that's not the terminator outfit that's the replica just like what howard has what is she talking about? Well, he well again he he doesn't have a re like that that person probably had a replica. Howard has something that's legit from the studio, um, but unless it was a rich person's place, they really did get the skeleton from the prop 
from the original Terminator. Who knows if she's trying, maybe she's trying to piss him off saying this person had the legit shit. I and, mean, you remember know, that, remember that Orlando Bloom interview where he was talking about that dog. The he dog had? That he, yeah. The skeleton, was it the skeleton of his dog that, that died yeah. or was, yeah, I think, or was it, it wasn't, it wasn't taxiderm or whatever. He wasn't stuffed like trigger. Uh, I was, think it was the know, skeleton. He was like kind of poo pooing it or like, what is that about? You are you are just like this, but worse. Well, th- first of all, I think that's creepy as fuck. The skeleton of a dead pet in your oh my display God. in if your I, house. If, if Henry pass passes away, which I will be so devastated about. Of course. I would never look or want a stuffed Henry. Oh my God. It would be creepy as fuck. I, I I don't know. I have it like I know there's people that have this attachment to their pets and stuff. They would do that. I, I guess I'm insulting you guys. Sorry, I'm making a value judgment. I'm insulting you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I think it's creepy as fuck. But um, Ugh. the but uh, yeah, it, it's it, your design choices are your own. The fact that you go into the Howard's mansions and it looks like every fucking hotel they ever visited, every room is a different Four Seasons, and that's the decor they chose because they have no taste of their own. I was I mean, going to say when we when we talk about tacky that mansion, oof, oh my god, everything looks like I don't know a uh, Trump Tower, Holiday Inn Express. It's just brutal. It is. It they like it. They almost it's like they went to Joan Rivers' house. They go, I'd like this room to be like that. I want this room to be like Liberace's piano room. I want this one to be like you know yeah the Four Seasons lobby. The concierge, whatever, like right at right at the front, the the bellhop, that uh, front desk, like fuck it, no, we don't know. <laughs> this is what rich people, <laughs> we think rich people's houses look like. I mean, pick a theme, yeah, that is cohesive through the house. If you want bedrooms to be maybe a little bit different, that's fine. But everything from their bathrooms to their kitchen to their living area, it looks like you're in a different house, and it's all ugly. Yeah, the bowling alley is attached to like the 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 game room, but they got these records on the wall and there's guitars there. Like, what is it? It's like being in a I don't know a David Buster's in a Discovery Zone. <laughs> I still think it's like your father's garage full of shit that you couldn't get rid of. Basically, that's like, the decor. Wow, I wonder if that's real. Probably his isn't real either. No. It's embarrassing too. Like I took a picture of it to send to John Favreau to show him how happy I am with my helmet because I I kind of was deluding myself that it was from the movie. Yeah. See, what? Like, he changed it again. He was happy, but then remember he just said, I don't know, five minutes ago that, oh, I knew this thing was a cheap piece of shit. Story changes every time on a dime. Bookshelf, and then I realized to the left of the helmet are all books about me, which looks uh-huh. really bad. <laughs> no. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh god so there's pictures of him all over the walls or with beth and then there's been your own books your own True. books nothing i mean he has nothing else nothing nothing not, not like uh some encyclopedia i know but imagine having stacks of books about you at least put in i don't know three or four <laughs> Well, <laughs> different authors in there. I don't even care. Even if it says it on the leather bound cover, but nothing's yeah. inside. Try. Put the yeah. grapes of wrath in there. Do something. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> Meanwhile, it's a VHS cover. <laughs> it's, it's inside yeah. is porn, like gay porn or something. But yeah, well, you're right. Me. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, there are people that, okay, if you are. I guess if you're an athlete and you win lots of shit, you have a trophy trophy room. That makes sense. You have this thing you're very proud of. Like, what's his name? Um, God, Bjorn Borg. There's a great documentary about him and uh, John McEnroe. And he won Wimbledon like five times or whatever. And he sold his trophies at one point and he probably needed the money. Oh. And, uh, and then he... Um, and then he bought them back at a loss. Like he lost way too much, but he spent way more money buying them back than he got get selling them because he realized those were part of my life. I really achieved something special and I didn't realize what I was getting rid of. He had, it was a real wonderful documentary. It's on YouTube. It's about an hour long. The two of them were like rivals and they became like best men at their each other's weddings and stuff like that. It was a really fantastic and touching story. And, um, and well, it's like, like, I understand that aspect of something, your own achievements, but your books, 
your terrible books that you deny that you yeah. even made pretty much and all the sentiments in them. Yeah, great display next to your helmet that you loved, hated, hate, love. <laughs> um, well, he, John, he, uh, John McEnroe, did he stick up somebody for his memorabilia back in a hotel like OJ? <laughs> well, no, the, 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 I'm talking uh, uh, Bjorn Borg sold his Wimbledon trophies, not John oh, McEnroe. John McEnroe, he was always been able to, he's been solvent for a long time. I love him, actually. I, I, I hate to, I don't really care for tennis, but I do like some of the personalities involved, and he's uh, one of my faves, one of my favorite pundits of all time. There are some people at, I mean, I don't care about golf. I don't care yeah. about basketball, but the sure. stick out personalities and stories for me are what make it. And John McEnroe is definitely one of them where I don't give a flying F about tennis. Yeah. And yet for some reason, we I've watched a him. bunch of different things with him. I think he's yeah. fascinating. He is. He's a, he's a great storyteller. Yeah. Yeah. And then to the right of that is this giant blow up of my Rolling Stone cover. Oh, no. <laughs> so I went, oh, my God, this guy's going to think I'm out of my fucking You are. Mind. Yeah, I am. Like, this is the height of narcissism. You have magazine covers. Again, That is that it's the same as a trophy? I suppose so. But maybe you put it in one room that no one else sees. Spread it out a little. I would like to know what Rolling Stone cover went next to the Iron Which one? Man with, mask. With the one, the one with it? the kittens or the, the original uh, Prince Charming one? Yeah, the gay Fabio. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> Me too. Why not? So why not? I got memorabilia, all right? So. Hey. You got none of the pictures and books about you? Yeah, it's books about me and, and pictures of me. And so. <laughs> <laughs> You're dumbfounded. That Rolling Stone cover, the one, the gay Fabio one, he looks yeah. like the gayest pirate I've yeah. ever seen. The windblown hair, the chiseled jaw. I mean, <laughs> the, gay, the, the gay pirate Roberts. The photoshopping that had to go on from that team. They were yeah. probably working on that longer than the helmet. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, was that an Annie Leibovitz um, photo? I can't remember who did which photos. I'm sorry. There, I mean, I have a lot of information in my brain about Stern, but I can't remember who did which photo. Now I'm getting them confused. Is it Fran Leibowitz is the photographer and Annie Leibowitz is the... Uh, the uh, someone's the, a writer and someone's a photographer. I get them mixed up all the time. Anyway... Um, one of them the, looks just like him. <laughs> <laughs> the, one, the one that doesn't look like him took the photo. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Annie, and um, and you're right that, that like he first of all he he must have thought that's that's the fucking that was the first Rolling Stone cover he ever had. First of all, it wasn't the first article of him in Rolling Stone, but it was the first cover. He must have like creamed in his pants at that cover. I wonder if the Seinfeld puffy shirt episode came out before or after it, because I almost think that that Seinfeld puffy shirt looked kind of like that cover and i wonder if jerry was cognizant of that and decided to do that episode based on that terrible cover <laughs> the puffy shirt 1993 it was a year before <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that i was thinking about that that wasn't even that good of an episode you're you're really like wanting to watch it for that one scene where he walks out with it and they get the laugh but it's not that much of a laugh it's not much different than when howard goes out dressed in drag on letterman the laugh lasts about 10 seconds not even and then if that and then you're done it's just an iconic piece of clothing and because the show was iconic so they actually have that displayed somewhere my sister took a picture next to it in new york city i remember yeah jerry stole jerry stole it from the purple rain tour <laughs> <laughs> had to just take the picture properly so that like the, you didn't see all that stuff the, the only books you see are like the bible and like i have a bunch of books you, have you the know bible? yeah and, like that why that george washington <laughs> book you gave me you know what i mean like right. you know books that wouldn't make me look so shallow <laughs> so i actually was posing books uh, next to my iron man helmet to show him how intellectual i am <laughs> the bible makes you intellectual isn't he jewish well, but, what but kind that's, of Bible? Beth, that's, Beth's Catholic. I'm sure it was given to her. Oh, so it's to a nod for the mom. Got yeah, it. Basically, Miss basically. Mom Ostrowski. Mom Ostrowski gave her the Gideon's Bible to hold on to. Then it turns out that it's yeah. just. I mean, to the left of those, uh, to the head, is just books about Howard Stern. <laughs> and to the right is my big giant Rolling Stone thing. Howard Stern is ready for his close up. <laughs> so, like, I, I like have the Bible next to my Iron Man head. 
And so Favreau can see I'm like a really deep guy. Right, right. Look at I no. put a special place. I'm like Sylvester Stallone. Remember, there was an art collector for a while. Yes, right. Until he found out all this. <laughs> art collector and painter, actually. Really? I didn't yep. know that. Yep, Sly is a painter, uh, or it was at one point. I remember seeing in Architectural Digest his his mansion that he lived with Jennifer Flavin, and um, he I, at one point remember the Rocky statue was in front of the um, museum yeah. in Philly. Uh, I think they had they they wanted it removed because really it had the only thing it had to do with Philly was the fact that the movie was set there. Um, but you know, right? Like he's not from Philly as far as I know. And, uh, he took it back and it was standing, it was in his backyard. Basically he had the statue and then they, the, the city complained. I think people wanted it back and I think it's back there now. I remember this saga and I do remember they did want it back. I don't know if it's there now, but that is so iconic. I don't know why they would ever take that off. I mean, that's Philadelphia. Something everybody, that's something everybody goes to take a picture with. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's it's like in Hong Kong. There's a big statue of Bruce Lee, and uh, it's 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 actually part of a promenade of famous um, uh, Hong Kong actors over the years, and uh, and their statues are there too. But almost everybody's right behind the right in front of the Bruce Lee statue, getting their picture taken as they should. Wow. I don't know. Since you live in Asia, I was watching this thing. um, Me and I in its parks, like parks in Asia, and they have these. Um, rocks where they they sculpt out trails and you can put your marbles in them and then it goes throughout the rock like a maze oh, and it's all wow. these intricate things and I was wondering if you have those near your parks. I she said ask Fillmore if he has these. No, I've never, heard, I've never I've never I've never heard of that and I've never seen that. But that that sounds actually kind of fascinating. That's a hell of a lot. Sounds like a hell of a lot of work to be honest. Yeah, it's super cool. Jesus intricate, yeah. Art was fake. <laughs> that was the same thing. He had the same thing happen. Right. At least you didn't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mike, how you doing? Howard. Hey. Stop being such a snur. Why don't you also post a picture of it so the rest of your fan base can see it? Oh, you want to see the picture of the Iron Man head? Oh, wait, head. Let me, wait, you want to see a fake head in my office? <laughs> All right, wait. I'll go, let me figure that out. Hold on. Let me figure that out. I got because I still have it in my phone. Might as well post this yeah. shitty fucking thing. <laughs> so now if he posts it, he thinks it's like, yeah, I'm going to get my fans on Favreau's case. But it's not probably going to work out the way he thinks. Nope. Let me just see. Hold on. I'm back here by with my man purse. My nurse. Now, what do you have to do? Send that to Jason or something? Yeah, let me just take a look what's in this. I want to make sure all my books of me are out of there and... This is really embarrassing to post that. So you know it's embarrassing, but you still have them up. Why? Well, then why have them up? This whole conversation is embarrassing. I feel like this is when a serial killer goes into a blind rage and hacks off a bunch of people and then takes a deep breath and says, okay, I'm good now for a few what months. Have I, and what have I done? <laughs> and what have I done? Yeah. How do I cover He's this up He's staring at a room of a bunch of Gagged, bound, stabbed people, and he's like, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> when did this happen? <laughs> That's what this conversation is. It really is, yeah. The Hulk rages, and all of a sudden he becomes David Banner again, or Bruce Banner, and all of a sudden, oh, Jesus Christ, what, what, who leveled all these buildings? It wasn't me. And I think that's how he gets. I think often, like the Wendy Williams rant. There was design to that, but also, but I don't think he knew it would go as far and as long as it and as bad as it did. And then he had that not he I guess remorse, but it wasn't really remorse. It was more like save my own ass if he can by taking it off the air. Well, back in the day, remember when he went into these blind rages about competition, sure. whether it be the Grease Man or Don or Imus, the o, o and A or whoever, yeah. But he had the those foes, but he had funny people in the room that he let speak. Yep. Now. He is so narcissistic that he cuts off people's mics. There is no comedian in the room to give this some levity. Yeah. So it becomes like a raging rambling from an old geezer who just mm -hmm. cannot see past this rage. And nobody's yeah. there to pull him out of it either because that was the talent of the rest of them as well as they mm -hmm. knew how to make this a little bit easier to digest and then they could move on in a funny way. Well, the the ironic thing is he has he's always had control of his board and this, the volume the the levels from everybody all the mics in the room we know that, but only in the last in the last little while we we know about the Robin edict that it's like him her and Fred are not to be unless they're asked questions, 
and then he has to suddenly like pu- make her mic go higher or suddenly make it turn it on basically unless they ask robin questions she's not to speak during the first 60 minutes of whatever interview if it goes that long and they usually do but then recently in the metallica uh breakdown which we're going to do uh the clip that we have you can hear her almost as if she's in the room in the setting up equipment for Metallica because her mic is potted so low, almost imperceptible. You can hear it's like, oh, so Robin's speaking when she's not supposed to, and they fucked this up. Like, they should have just completely turned her mic off, but they didn't. And as a result, you hear, oh, I see. You've been demoted too, haven't you, Robin? It's so true. I listened to that, and it does sound like it's almost like they catch somebody – on a radio like that they have in their pocket Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it becomes robin but it's or back somebody backstage it's really weird but like imagine imagine being robin and that's the the state of your relationship with your quote-unquote partner or co-host that his mic is Oh, well, she was always known as Mike was more important than hers, but it, now it's more obvious to her than ever that you are, you are, that you are with Fred. You are with Bowie who can't get on the air, but X amount of minutes, every show, uh, Fred, Sal. unless, unless we arrange this in advance, you're not going to be talking. Exactly. Sal. And Ro- yep. Yeah. And Robin has to take it because when her shot was around that 15 foundation era where Mm -hmm. she thought she was going to be the new Oprah Mm -hmm. that failed miserably. And she doesn't have the age time wherewithal to just reinvent herself again. That was her shot and she blew it. She blew it. Yep. Yep. I can't bear how shallow I am, (laughs) but you're going to stay that way. Yes. It doesn't seem to be working. That psychiatry (laughs) (laughs) seems I'm shallow for life. (laughs) <laughs> all right let's see pictures all pictures the hell is this oh yeah here's the three different pictures of the iron man head one of them you could see my all the pic- books about me <laughs> <laughs> this one's like why we love howard stern oh, you know I mean? oh my god he is so <laughs> drowning and not having any self-awareness this is like blind rage narcissism mixed with I, I don't even know. Like, why even go to the pretense of saying you're in therapy when you know, like, like you, you've accepted when you're, do, when you're doing this and you're laughing at it the way he is, he knows what he's like. He doesn't want to change. He doesn't care about changing. And Ron Robbins told him this on the air a couple of times. You don't actually want to change. Right. He's doing, he needs a Dr. Melfi to kick him out of therapy and say, clearly None of this is helping you. It's actually building your narrative to yep. make it work. It's making it worse, if anything. Right. Like you, 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 it's a great sound bite to say, well, I've evolved. I've been in therapy this long. I've changed, whatever. But if you're no longer in therapy and you can't say it, well, you could always lie about it anyway. What therapist would say, oh, no, I'm, t- you know, I'm, I'm seeing Howard. <laughs> no one would want to claim him as their patient. Nope. Yeah. I mean, fin- financially, yeah, but not publicly. That's for certain. Oh, yeah. I want a yacht. Yeah, I didn't separate. Uh, oh, this one. Oh, this one has tons of pictures of me. Wait, oh, here we are. Here's the one where it's just like. That's the good. Here's one. that book you bought me. This is. The, oh, you staged it. I staged. There's a thesaurus <laughs> and a dictionary, oh, and um, quotes big. quotes from um, the Bible. You see that? So it's like not Cole's, even the Bible. It's not even it's the Bible. <laughs> it's the Cole's the notes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the live, laugh, love of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> it's reduced Bible. The Bible reduction. It's Bible for dummies. <laughs> I'm trying to seem smart to John Favreau. Here's my hooked on phonics Bible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, hold on! Do you, you don't remember? Do you remember when your kids those that those sets of kids books that are like perfectly square and they were all like uh, Mister uh, Mister Greedy and Mister uh, you know like uh, they were all like uh, about emotions and stuff like oh I yeah can't, uh, like <laughs> like uh, there's Miss Miss Celery or something like that yeah it would be it would be for him it would be like Job. Mr. Job, 
<laughs> no, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mr. Lazarus. <laughs> Oh my god, reduced to like Dick and Jane. <laughs> Basically, yeah, exactly. Let's play this Favreau's card that he wrote. Oh, me. look at that. No, that I, I don't think I sent him that one because <laughs> Revelations is just a series of goosebumps <laughs> books in his house. <laughs> or, or when you're a kid and you know how you get the highlights magazine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I didn't want him to see that have his card on right, display. Right. <laughs> Find all the animals on the ark. <laughs> National <laughs> Geographic oh. for kids. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I'll post this one. I'll post the one with the card on display. The hell, even though it's gay. <laughs> it's what's in the apartment. Jason, if I send this to you, can you put it on howardstern.com? Yeah. Okay. All right, it'll be on howardstern.com. How long is that going to take? Three days? <laughs> That's what the... Uh... Well, everyone's probably going to the website right now, so yeah, it'll probably take a long time. Don't rush to the website Yeah, because... get off the website because we haven't oh. got the picture up there yet. Because, be, and also, you're going to be tremendously disappointed in this. <laughs> As you were. Yeah. Everybody experienced the same thing. You wait till... I wonder, because at the time he was a big Fox watcher and then he switched... They always hawk Bible books on Fox. The 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 hosts really? like I know one like Shannon Bream, she writes series of Bible books, like Women of the Bible or uh stories of the Bible, stuff like that. It's basically taking sections of it and kind of making dumbing it, digest it down. Easily, easily digestible by the masses. Yes, and oh, always Jesus. hawking Bible adjacent books to you know pawn on to leaders i wonder if quotes of the bible was a fox seller from like one of the hosts that he liked i'd have to look that up actually i'd be curious but it certainly makes sense that uh, you know some people would need you know pieces of it instead fed to them instead of you know reading the whole thing which is like to be fair the bible is a heavy read oh. you know I, I don't mean just physically i mean it's you it's it's not a one and done session with the bible uh, I read no. it when I was, I read it for the real, the, for in, in, in depth, like university, I took a religion, religions course and, uh, had to read. It was fascinating, but, um, and I like it as a piece of literature. <laughs> I just think it's fiction. That's all. I, I, Jordan Peterson has done a really good, he got really into doing a lecture series about this Yeah. and he talked about it on Rogan and that was fascinating. I like to hear those type of lectures from a person, but mm. just him, <laughs> I want to seem smart to Favreau. <laughs> I love, I love Christopher Hitchens uh, takes takes on, uh, on the uh, Christianity and, 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 and Islam. Actually, I love hearing some of that stuff because even whether you agree or not, you actually, Actually, it actually gets your mind working and gets yeah. you, uh, you know, working in a different wavelength. Maybe resetting the, uh, you know, your, your your neurons a little bit and going, hmm, interesting. Let me consider that. Um, I like most of Christopher Hitchens' takes, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was. He's he's a voice that's missed for sure. The disappointment you feel <laughs> times that by ten. That's the disappointment I feel. I'm learning that John Favreau sent me something Ralph has in his house. This thing is a disaster. Please, do, Favreau, stop sending, stop sending me things. It's not working out. <laughs> Let's see. Send Jason Kaplan. All right. No, actually, he's figured out a way to post this pretty quickly, so it should be up there in one minute. All right. Jason, I want that up there in one minute. I'm timing you. It's 8, 11, 56. All right, I'll give you 8, 12. By 8, 13, I want it up. In between going to tell Tracy uh, all the things Gary should be doing and uh, and then uh, re arranging uh, fake tweets for things and trying to sort out other issues. Can you also be the webmaster, Jason? We're not getting to get pay anymore. Can I do absolutely nothing? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Testing you guys. There you oh. go. Dream. I'm testing you, but don't but don't expect more money if you pass. <laughs> yeah. One of these days. You know what? What the hell? It's just it was kind of sucky. I had my meeting with Tim. And I'm like, look over there. <laughs> There's nothing. Dude, enough. The other thing I have is that Paul McCartney guitar he gave me. And I love Paul. Oh. But, you know. He never played it. <laughs> he never played that. He signed it. <laughs> you knew that would come up. <laughs> <laughs> He's so insane. <laughs> His DNA is not on the guitar. Fuck him. 
Yeah. He didn't, he didn't bleed while playing. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Looks like the one he it's played. It's a replica yeah. of his guitar that he never played. I know. And yeah. that kind of like bums. Like, I want to say that's Paul's guitar. <laughs> But bums you out. It's fucking Paul McCartney. Holy shit. He handed, he, he handed, by the way, I remember specifically because I saw the Howard TV segment at the time. He <gasps> physically handed him the guitar over the console personally. I know. And he, that's, I remember. That's, that's something you could put on a loop if you wanted it on display and just put a little like tablet and have it constantly refreshing. Take a picture of that moment and put mm-hmm. it underneath the guitar in some glass display in your disgusting house and yeah. call it a day. No, he shits on the Paul McCartney to guitar too. So Favreau, <laughs> get in line. And in between mastering the seven ten split, you can look at that guitar you'll never play. <laughs> <laughs> Frick. And I have it in a display case. But he did sign it. He signed it. It is Paul's signature. Oh, I, have oh. I have a museum of almost things that were great. You know what I mean? I don't have one great this fucking is the thing. Museum of not so great. Well, a couple of years ago, I decided I was one of these guys that never got sentimental about anything. And I said, you know what? That's wrong. You know, through psychiatry and stuff, I learned that I can see my things. And I'm gonna. Be- it's always good when you insert. <laughs> when you're taught to be emotive. <laughs> I was just going to say, this is such a great example of narcissism. I need to, t- I need to be taught how to grieve. I need to be taught yeah. how to be happy in love. Yes. I need to be taught how to, to like something and value something. Yeah. It doesn't really matter what it is. If Paul gave him the guitar, signed the guitar, handed the guitar, it's never good enough. I swear to God, if he played the guitar film more, if it wasn't the song he liked, he'd still shit on it. <laughs> if he luthered the fucking guitar in studio with like a blackjack and was it with the, with a fucking like a an anvil and hammer and created the fucking guitar from scratch in studio it wouldn't be good enough if it was a guitar that paul got pissed off one session and beat the fuck out of yoko during it right, it's right. Still a crash. <laughs> with pieces of her head attached to it <laughs> <laughs> If you gave him the get the get back master tapes, he would be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mean I got to get a reel to reel for this cocksucker? God damn it! You know, if something really means something. Like I got a picture of Mo Larry and Curly in my office, and it means something. <laughs> uh, you know, what does it mean? <laughs> you got a fucking picture of Mo Larry and Curly. Not signed. What does that mean? It means I have a picture stooge. of Johnny Carson in my room. Yeah, that might be weird to some people, but it's a picture. It does mean something to me, but it would mean more if it was signed. If Johnny yeah. went across the desk and handed me this picture and said, here, I'd yeah. be like, wow, that's I'm work- amazing. I'm working on getting one, but it's it, they're they're pricey. I mean, and you're, you're still going to you're going to spend like one hundred and fifty bucks on it. Sometimes two hundred, two hundred and fifty, whatever it's expensive. The one I really wanted was a signed picture of John Candy and they're going for like seven fifty, eight hundred. There's an amazing one with Tom Hanks and John Candy from early on, like around 1980 or something. And I can't I can't justify it. I have a signature of Gilbert and his rubber balls and liquor. Yeah. yeah. When I went to go see him. Mm-hmm. And I want to figure I want to get a picture of a frame picture of him in black and white, which is like the theme of my room of like the c- celebrities I like, which makes me seem like I'm ancient, but I'm really 36. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> there's there's a couple of framing companies where you could because I know he would have signed like the inside slip like it's nothing that'll destroy the actual book contents you could cut out get have them cut out the signature in like a rectangle shape and then um put that on a like a not a bristol board but some kind of backing and then they'll put the signature underneath the photo of you and your dad and gilbert and they'll frame it but it probably wouldn't be that cheap but maybe costco does something like that like black mounting and whatnot i just was like i gotta figure out how to get this signature and frame it and i can't yeah. figure out how without ripping the book and i don't want to do that either so no. anyways sorry to go off on that tangent let's keep sorry, going guys. with this marvelous podcast <laughs> let's find out why is larry moe and curly on his wall because i love mo larry and curly when i look at it i feel good about about that i love those guys <laughs> yeah, I got two- why Got one where they're just standing there, and I got another one where uh, Curly's checking the cannon to see if it works, and he gets his head blown off. Right. Yeah. <laughs> How can you not have that? I hate to say it, like I, I do enjoy, I did enjoy the Three Stooges when I was a kid, but as an adult, to be 
fascinated with the Three Stooges is a little odd. I could see the Marx Brothers, Groucho certainly, because he was so funny and so witty uh, and had a career well past the Marx Brothers. And but but the Three Stooges were kind of it's kind of immature shit. And that's where he is mentally. My grandfather used to watch it a lot. And I Mm -hmm. remember him being in his recliner, feet up, and just he had this really specific laugh. And so I like that memory. But again, when I used to watch it with him, only certain things would make me laugh. But it's cheesy. It really is. And like you you get them for... 90 seconds or, th- or tw- two minutes that's funny but that's if you, enough <laughs> there was a three there was a 90 minute movie they made with i think will sasso and it was supposed to be this big biopic but then they, the the distributors all said fuck it why bother no one's gonna watch this and no one did they buried it i think i watch it more so for the memory and nostalgia of that time with him you yeah. know not so much for my own loving of the three stooges yeah doesn't really hold up so much anymore. Even though slapstick, yeah, it can be funny. It's just of its it's of its era. But um, so I started to get sentimental. And then when McCartney gave me that guitar in here, I was like really moved. And I built a display case, and I he signed it. And I have it on a stand. And then I've got three pictures of McCartney handing it to me and everything. And I made a whole display out of it. And so you knew. So, so it did mean something to you. What do you fucking? What the, he ruminated on it more and rationalized. He decided it's not important enough. That's, That's the narcissism. Exactly it. Holy yes. fuck! Bottomless just, fucking well. This is how. This is. You're right. This is the perfect example of it's never enough. Never. Then I come to realize someone had to burst my fucking bubble and tell me, you know, that's a guitar that he sells. Like, it's a replica. They even make it. I said, but it's really old. They go, no, they make it look old. Right. Like, you mean he didn't play it? Because no. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> so when people walk in, I always go, look. And they look at the guitar and they go, oh, but I, I know it's a fake. But Just it's like, not. It's perfect representation. It's not fake, first of all. You're fake. But... Uh, the yeah, it's it's a representation. It's the gesture. He doesn't understand that the gesture is what what what's the important part. But he never will. Nope. Signature, yeah, yeah. and he did give it to you. Yeah. Oh fuck <laughs> off! And you oh, men just need Christ. some pictures of Favreau handing you this head. Yeah. Well. And now Favreau sends me pictures. <laughs> no of more. Favreau. I wish he would have done an unboxing video like the kids do with toys. Oh, Christ. <laughs> he could have been a YouTube star unboxing all these celebrity presents that he's so ungrateful for. <laughs> that would it would be it would it would be like, you know, the, the amount of people shitting on it would be f- phenomenal. We can make oh. a TikTok video out of it. Like we're, again, I've been saying I'm going to start making TikTok videos. It's just a matter of sitting down and making like 50 of them and then doling them out little by little. But my God, you could have you could have a field day with his shitting on gifts. <laughs> Imagine if he became the first unboxing star. <laughs> yeah. But it goes so I, negative. Yeah. Next oh, time, Favreau, send Robert Downey Jr. No. in here with no. something from the movie. Yeah, but. I'm sick of it. You know what? I was right to begin with. This psychiatry isn't working out for me. I knew not to get think? caught up in collecting yeah. bullshit. Everything just goes horribly wrong. So he, it's like a hobby. I think I'm going to try this collecting thing. But it does it. it, it like, why, why wouldn't a psychiatrist figure out? I mean, first of all, he wants to keep getting paid. So point him in the wrong direction every time. You'll get. You'll stay longer in therapy. But. Uh, why would you suggest something to him that you know he's not going to get any kind of meaningful uh, because he's not fixable? Just to what? To, 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 to delay him until he figures out the, the shrink's been using me for 20 years? But listen to this. He has this moment of clarity where yeah. this isn't working yes. because this will never work. Your right. personality disorder will not allow you to feel real joy, to feel yeah. real empathy, to feel Ever. real gratefulness. There's mm-hmm. never there's never going to be a point where any of that happens. And the fucking psychiatrist knows this. So you can give him all these little errands to say, hey, try this hobby. See how it feels. So, yeah, or right. maybe you should write the, a thank you note to feel really grateful for something. Or maybe yeah. you should try this exercise or that exercise. It is all pointless. <laughs> I think that at this point, if the psychiatrist is a legit 
uh, like really trying to do his job. I think he's just basically throwing whatever he can saying, look, maybe in the hopes that maybe somewhere along the line, some of this will sink in and he'll actually penetrate that armor of stupidity and 79 and, 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 and the egotism and make him a human being, but it won't, it never will. It's kind of like when you, like I play piano, but you get to a certain point and I'll, where you do, you're doing your lessons, you're getting older and you realize this is kind of where it's going to That's stay. the plateau. That's the plateau. I'm not going to be able to do what other people do that I've mm-hmm. seen. This is just mm-hmm. not going to happen for me. My brain is not going to click this way. Mm-hmm. And you come to that realization, you move on, and you're happy with what you know and accept it. Right. He cannot do that. And so he, no. this fucking psychiatrist, I wish he would just say, listen, the lessons are over. Yeah. Move on. You're a yeah. nutbag. And I don't want to collect stuff from my, you know, I, I got stuff from my history, but I want this stuff from other people's. Sure. Know, to show how important I am. You know. And yeah. not- <laughs> I want, I want stuff from other people's history to, to show, show how important, how how important, important I, I am. am. Yes. Everything is a triangulation of him. Right. Do you Self-worth. see this, everybody? <laughs> Jesus, age. <laughs> they send you crap. Yeah. <laughs> They no. sure do. I really think that the Paul McCartney thing is a nice thing yeah. because he handed it to you yeah. and he did sign it. No, thanks, Ralph. Right in front of you. All I know is my bubble was so burst this morning when Ralph sent me back a picture of his <laughs> Iron Man head and it was the I exact one imagine. I have. What yeah. time in the morning did oh, you open that? 4.30. <laughs> 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 I check my email first thing to see what's going on. Right. Yeah. He's fucked up. And I wasn't even going to open his picture because I knew it was a picture that I had sent him. I was just going to stare at my own picture. Right. That I oh, my God. Why? I, I know. <laughs> it's all hold on. The, the agony is almost over. For a picture from no. Ralph, you were just looking at you, for your picture again. And I'm looking at <laughs> the look you just gave is the look I have in the doctor's office when I have to give blood. And it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Jesus age. And I go, oh, my helmet looks so good. And I go, but wait a second. The book's next to those aren't my and wait, why is there like a plastic bubble wrap behind the <laughs> Iron Man head? Did I take a I know I didn't take this picture. And I went, Oh my God. He's got this he Join the club and he's got this fucking thing. And his eyes were lit up. It, lit up better a better display than mine. <laughs> I want them to kill myself. I'm not kidding. <laughs> okay, guys, that is the absolute end of this episode, but not before I show Sam one last thing, because she was just doing something while we were doing that, various ways to commit suicide. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, behind the scenes, I was just stabbing myself with a pencil pen, and then I took a picture frame and bashed it against my head. Hold on. <laughs> you get a little thrill out of it. <laughs> well, what about you two? What happened on your first day? I'll make believe you don't. Oh, yeah. I'll never forget it. <laughs> I was at the Puritan made ice cream. Well, don't make it a long story. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Me and my cousin Maud. Maud. <laughs> Having one of their specials. It was called a steamboat. Oh, it was so delicious. Five different flavors. And it, Archie was sitting at another table with that fellow Jefferson crab. Remember him? Anyway, Archie was trying to get my attention. So he used to put two straws in his mouth like a wolf. Please include that. I love to the, the pantomime suicides. He's got a whole bunch of them. Um, anyway, um, th- that was the best one. That was my favorite one. We hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, particular episode. There is more, but we're going to dole it out slowly because it's it's tough. It's a circular saw of fucking narcissism and him going around. I was doing the symbol like this constant rotation. And uh, but we hope you've gotten something a little more out of this particular one because it's very rare that he gets that self realization on the air and and verbalizes it. And he he lets everybody else hear it. Notice for he gets the realization and then he forgets it in the next sentence. And goes right back into the same argument. It's incredible. So imagine what Beth goes through on a regular basis when she has to spend any length of time with him. 
Maybe that's why, if you guys haven't checked out our Facebook page, you can see some new pictures of her looking crazy as ever. <laughs> oh, by the way, did you hear that video of that, her talking to the cat and that weird <laughs> meow? <laughs> I showed Rick these videos. Oh, man. He goes, Dude, that bitch is so loony. Look at her. I'm like, yeah. I know. I, yeah, the, the hats. The cat yeah. hats. <laughs> Damn, and it's yeah. so sad. Yeah, it is. Anyway, guys, take care. We love you. See you on the next one. Bye, guys. Okay, and I'm going to fly out there next week, and I'm going to straighten your ass out. <laughs> and I'm going to make sure that you really get it. I'm going to make sure that you know what a rude, thoughtless little pig you really are. Do you understand? You're a rude, thoughtless pig. So be ready on Friday the 20th, because I'm coming out there. I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to turn around, and I'm going to fly right back home. <laughs> you are a rude, <laughs> thoughtless pig.